we hear again the story of the coming of the wise men. It is told in Matthew's Gospel, the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who shall shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them, and it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts upon the scripture be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Everyone does it. Everyone. When life isn't quite right, it's normal to complain a little. You let people know that you're not happy about someone or something. Now, some people complain a little, and some people complain a lot. Some people complain when they have a good reason to complain, And some people complain when they have no reason at all to complain. That's what happened when a congregation went looking for a new pastor. After an extensive search, they decided to call a talented young woman to be their next pastor. The vote was unanimous, except for one old timer. Well, shortly after the new pastor arrived, a member of the congregation invited her to go fishing with him. He also invited the old timer to go as well, hoping that his opposition to the new pastor would lessen a little after he got to know her better. So the three of them went fishing. When they got out into the middle of the lake, though, they discovered that they didn't have their bait and tackle with them. It was back on the dock. The old-timer grumbled, we'll have to go back and get it. Oh, that won't be necessary, the pastor said. With that, she proceeded to climb out of the boat and walk across the the water to the dock. The old-timer shook his head in disbelief. You see, he said, I told you we shouldn't bring her with us. She can't even swim. Everyone complains a little from time to time. Because we are a people of faith, though, we believe that when life isn't quite right, the best thing you can do is take the problem to God. Over the years, though, I've noticed that people are very different when it comes to how they want God to help them with their problems. Suppose, for example... There's a someone at work or school or a neighbor who is making your life miserable. What do you do? Do you ask God to make the person who's giving you a hard time less mean-spirited? 
Or do you ask God to help you be more patient and understanding when it comes to dealing with that person? In other words, do you ask God to change that other person, or do you ask God to change you so that you can deal with that person in a better way? That's the decision that you have to make when life isn't quite right. Do you ask God to change the other person, or do you let God change you? Now, believe it or not, that is precisely the situation that the wise men found themselves in when they arrived in Bethlehem. You know the story. Unbeknownst to the wise men, Herod was using them. Herod told them to go and search diligently for the child so that he too could come and worship him. What Herod really wanted, though, was for the wise men to find the child so that he could go and slit the child's throat. The wise men may not have been aware of Herod's evil intentions, but our wise and wonderful God knew exactly what was in Herod's heart. That's why Matthew tells us that after God warned the wise men in a dream not to go back to Herod, they went back to their own country by another way. Notice now that in that perilous predicament, God didn't change Herod. God told the wise men they were the ones who were going to have to change. God told the wise men that they were going to have to change their plans and go home by another way. By the way, if we assume, which makes sense, that on their way to Bethlehem, the wise men took the most direct and quickest route, that means that on their way home, they had to take a route that was longer and more difficult. Now, people who read this story will look at that and say that it's unfair. After all, the wise men weren't the ones causing the problem. Herod was the problem. So they'll tell you that what the wise men should have done is they should have asked God to change Herod's wily ways and make him less paranoid. They should have bowed their heads and said, God, Please help Herod see the error of his ways, or at least help him to understand that this is all a part of your divine plan, and there isn't anything he can do about it anyways. So he might as well smarten up and get on board. We all feel that way from time to time. Change him, Lord. Change her, Lord. I'm not the problem here. Why should I be the one that has to change? The wise men, though, didn't do that. Instead of asking God to change Herod, they allowed God to change them, and they went home by another way. It isn't easy to do what the, Her what the wise men did that day, is it? It isn't easy to allow God to change you. That resistance to change can be seen in a poem that an elderly man wrote one day. The poem describes his feelings about living in a world full of com computers. This is what he wrote. Once upon a time, computers were only on TV, in science shows of note. A window was something you had to wash. A ram was a cousin of a goat. An application you filled out for employment a program I was a show on TV. A cursor was someone who used bad words. And a keyboard was on your piano. Log on was adding wood to the fire. Hard to drive a long trip on the road. A mouse pad was the place where a rodent lived. A backup was in your commode. Cut you did with a pocket knife. Paste you did with the glue. A web was the place where a spider lived and a virus you got with the flu. I think I'll stick to my paper and pen and the memory that's in my head. I hear that when a computer crashes, no one dies, but when it happens, they wish they were dead. <laughs> yes, when life isn't quite right, it's easier to ask God and want God to make someone else change. 
It's easier to do that than let God change you. God didn't solve the wise men's problem, though, by making Herod into a warm and fuzzy guy. God solved the problem by changing the wise men, by letting them know that they were going to have to change their plans and go home by another way. And maybe, just maybe, God is saying the same thing to you. Maybe God wants you to change. Maybe God wants you to change the way you're dealing with a difficult person. Maybe God wants you to change the way you're dealing with a problem. Maybe God wants you to change what you're doing and the way you're living your life. And if God is asking you to change, you can be sure of this one thing. God is asking you to change because God knows that it will make you into a better person, a stronger person, and a wiser person. That's the situation that former President Jimmy Carter found himself in many years ago. In his autobiography, he wrote, perhaps because of my Navy training, punctuality has been almost an obsession. Rosalind has always been adequately punctual, except by my standards. A deviation of five minutes or less in our departure time would cause a bitter exchange. One morning, I realized it was Rosalind's birthday, and I hadn't bought her a present yet. What could I give her that would be special for her? I hurriedly wrote a note. Happy birthday. As proof of my love, I will never make an unpleasant comment about tardiness. I signed it and delivered it in an envelope with a kiss. More than four years later, I still keep my promise. It has turned out to be one of the nicest birthday presents for Rosalind and me. The wise men didn't ask God to change Herod. They allowed God to change them. And that's what made the wise men wise. And the good news, my friends, is that there isn't any reason in the world why you and I can't be wise men and wise women today. Amen.